Attention SharePoint users, big changes are coming and you need to stay ahead of the game. With SharePoint designer workflows shutting down, it's time to discover the future of workflow automation. Get ready to unlock a new era of productivity and efficiency. In this video, I'm going to show you the technology that Microsoft recommends you move to. But first, let's get into the news that was announced. Microsoft has announced that the SharePoint 2013 workflows that you may have been using, especially in the on-prem days, are going away. What this means for you is that any workflows that you may have in your SharePoint online environment need to get migrated to something else. You have until April 2nd, 2026 to move these to a supported technology. There's an assessment tool Microsoft provides through the PNP community that can scan your environment and tell you how many workflows you've got. This needs to be run immediately in your environment so that you have an idea how many you're gonna have to move. Obviously not all of them will need to be moved because you may have workflows that are just no longer Longer needed, but you need to get ahead of this now so that you can start working to move things to a technology before they're all turned off. There's also some PowerShell commands you can run to immediately disable the creation of new SharePoint 2013 workflows, which I also advise once you get up to speed on what the recommended technology is. So what is the recommended technology? Well, the answer is in a product called Power Automate. You may have heard of this by the name of Flow before it was renamed Power Automate. Power Automate is part of the Power Platform in Microsoft 365. Uh, you're generally already licensed for that if you've got E3 or E5 licenses or, or equivalent. And it's a much more modern and sophisticated workflow solution for your environment. It's really simple to get started with Power Automate. In fact, it's a whole lot easier than SharePoint Designer workflows. So if you were able to do those, you'll definitely be able to do that. Let's walk through a basic example of how to set up a Power Automate workflow, also called a flow, to approve vacation requests from employees. So I've got a basic blank events list here, and this is gonna serve as my team's vacation calendar. So if somebody wants to take time off, they can add an event to this so that the entire team knows who's gonna be off which days. So what we need to do is we need to have an approval workflow so that when an item gets created on this calendar, it will send an approval to the manager for them to approve. If that request is rejected, then we'll just delete the event from the event calendar and send the user a message. To get started, we're just gonna go up to the tile menu and you'll see an option for Power Automate. We're gonna click on that. And then on the left-hand side, you're gonna see an option to create. This will take us right to where we need to go. So let's click create. And you have options here. You can start from a blank workflow and it'll allow you to pick how you want to start the flow. Should it be automated if it's triggered on maybe a calendar event creation, which sounds like what we're doing. It could be an event. It could be triggered by a number of different things, whether something's created or modified. The automated cloud flows will fire automatically based on some event that happens in the tenant. The instant cloud flow is where you have to run this manually. You could also schedule them. For now, we're gonna pick the automated cloud flow. We'll call this vacation requests and now we have to choose the trigger what the trigger means is what is going to happen to cause this flow to fire it shows us a number of different sharepoint forms and onedrive events there's even gmail in here there's a lot of different connections to other systems for now we want to trigger when an item is created now what you're looking at is the flow designer. This is how you're going to build out the flow. No longer are you dealing with the text-based nature of SharePoint designer workflows. You've got a graphical one here and it's gonna be a much better experience. So we have our trigger, which is the only item we start with, and it needs to know what site is this item gonna be created on and what list is it gonna be created on. Well, if I click the down arrow, it'll show me all the recent sites I've been to. So I'll pick the site I'm on and then it shows the lists. Now, the events list isn't showing up, and that's fine, because we can click on Enter Custom Value and just type in the name, and it'll find it when it runs. So this item's going to automatically fire anytime an item is added to the events list on my example hub site. So the next thing we need to do is add an approval. So for that, you'll see an option here that says Next Step. So we'll click this and it'll show us all of the connectors and the actions that we can choose from. Now a connector is basically the type of system you're going to connect to or the group of actions. There's connectors for things like SharePoint that have all the SharePoint actions. There's a OneDrive connector. There's an Azure connector. So you can check through the tabs and see the built-in connectors, the standard ones, the premium ones that will require additional licensing any custom connectors, 
and then a clipboard, and we'll show that later. So back on the All tab, what we can do is click on the search box and type in approval and we'll see our approval options and here's what we want right here start and wait for an approval and now there's two other options for this you could create an approval and then you could wait an approval so these are the same two steps that are just broken out compared to this top option and these are really handy if you want more advanced scenarios with an approval like maybe you want reminders because there are no reminders for this this is a much simpler approval Reminders can be implemented for these other things, but they're not built into those components. You'll design that with logic. That's a more advanced case, and all we want right now is just to create a simple approval. So I'll click on this option, and now we get to pick the approval type. And you've got different options, some of which relate to having multiple approvers. Maybe you want everyone to approve this item before it's approved, or whoever approves it first will satisfy this approval. You could also have custom responses, so maybe it's not approve and reject, but maybe it's yes and no, or something else that you specify in here. So you've got similar options for these. I'll just put first to respond because I'm only going to have one approver. Now that we've done that, it's going to ask us more information about this approval. What should the title be? Who are we sending the approval to? any details links back to the item so for the title we'll just put in vacation request but notice as soon as I clicked into this you see a box over here on the right this lets you pick fields from that list item that was created so you could reference back to those original items similar to how you could with the designer workflows so maybe we can put vacation request from put a space and then let's find the creator of this item created by display name you've got other options like the claims the email address the department you get a lot of fields here that would represent the creator but for this we just want the display name so i'll add that assigns to we'll send this to adele For the details of this approval, there's a description field that we can utilize. And then there's an item link and item description. Now these are both gonna go into a hyperlink. So the link here, if we search for the word link, will have the hyperlink to the list item. This will be handy if they wanna view the event that was added. And for the item link description, title I think would apply here. So after the flow is started by this trigger, which is automatic, it's going to immediately fire off an approval to a Dell Vance with the description and the other information from the calendar entry. So what happens if they approve it or reject it? Well, all that depends on what we want to do. And to find out what the outcome of that approval is, we'll add another step. And here we're gonna go into the control connector. This is where the logic is. So here we can evaluate a condition. If we're looping through an array or a collection of items, we have a couple of options like apply to each, do until, we even have a switch known as a case statement in some languages. There's even an option to terminate the flow entirely if we want to exit the flow early. What we want to do is add a condition to check the outcome. Now this will let you compare two options. For the first one, we're going to look at outcome. This is going to have either approve or reject. And we're going to evaluate whether outcome is equal to, and we could type in text here as well, the word approve. So if outcome is equal to approve, this yes branch is going to execute. If it's not approved, then that means it's to reject and the no branch is going to execute. For the yes branch, all we really want to do is send an email to the person letting them know that their vacation was approved. So for that, we can utilize the Outlook connector. Notice you'll see a mail connector here. This can send it as well, but this has more restrictions, notably on how many emails can be sent in a period of time. But we're gonna use the Outlook connector and what we can do just to make it even easier is type in send an email and you'll see the options. You'll see the one for the mail connector, but the Outlook connector is what we want to use. This is gonna send an email from the user that is creating this flow by default. So now we have our email related information. For the two field, notice that those fields don't come up, but if I click on add dynamic content, you'll see that it's here. And it knows that we're gonna be sending to an email address and it's already filtered this list to show us what fields would be accepted into that to field. We want the created by email because that's the person that created this request. For the subject, we'll just type in vacation approved and for the body, Something simple.
So once the approval is sent and the manager approves this, it'll send an email to the user that created that request, letting them know that the vacation's approved. What if the vacation wasn't approved? Well, for that, we're gonna be filling out the no branch of this condition. So we'll add an action. And what we want to do is delete the list item. So if we type in delete list item, it'll show us delete items with the SharePoint connector, which you can see down below. This is exactly what we want to do. So we'll click that. Again, we'll have to pick the site and list we want to update. Again, it doesn't show our events list, so we'll use enter custom value and just type in events. Next, it needs the ID of the list item. So for that, we could look over here and we'll see ID, which is coming from the when an item is created action. Notice that all these fields will have some sort of a group heading, which lets you know what action that these items are coming from. In this case, the when an item is created is our trigger at the top. And so the ID that this would be giving us is the ID of the new calendar entry that was added. So we'll click on this ID field. And now this will delete the item. We still need to let the user know that their vacation request was rejected. So let's send an email. I could click on add an action to create another email, but here's another trick that'll save you some time. If we click on the three dots, you'll see copy to my clipboard. If we click on this, now it's inside the clipboard. And if we go to add an action, you'll see an option for my clipboard. If you click on this, you'll see the send an email item. If we click on this, and the interface does get a little funky sometimes, but let's expand this back out. You'll see that it copied everything. It even copied the field values. And we have similar names on here as well. The second one has a two. We can rename these to give them better names. If you're new to Power Automate and you're excited about trying out something like this, just a simple flow to start building out your knowledge and get more experience with this thing. If that's you, click that like button. And now we can update this action to be more relevant. There's also the ability to include comments uh, from the approver when they're either approving or denying the request. And you can include those in the response as well. But just to keep things simple for a proof of concept, we'll leave it like this. And one other thing we can do with this approval before we save this and finish it all up is we can go down to advanced options and you'll see an option for the requester. This will make sure that when Adele gets the request, she'll know who sent it. So for this, we can search for the created by and you'll see created by display name belonging to the when an item is created action. So we'll pick the created by email and click save. And now that that's saved, let's go back to the details page of the flow. On here, you'll see the basic information for your flow. You'll see the name, the person who created it, the status, whether it's on or off, which can be toggled up here if you haven't found that already. You can turn it on and off. If it's off, you'll see this yellow bar indicating there's some sort of a problem with your flow, even though that problem just might be that you intentionally turned it off to do some work on it. You'll also see whether it's automated, instant, or some other type, and the plan that it's assigned to. More on this in a future video. You'll also see any connections that are added to this. So it shows the connector and also which account that connector is going to run under. So when the Outlook connector runs to send those emails, it's gonna look like it came from the Steve account. If a SharePoint item is deleted, updated, created, anything like that, then it's gonna show the created by, modified by, those types of fields. It's gonna show that Steve did those. So it is common to use service accounts for some of these types of things. So it doesn't look like a normal user did those and instead some service account made changes. That's very common to see. You'll also see the owners. So I can share this flow with other people and they can go and make changes or do any other sort of maintenance to this item. There's an edit button for this, which is where you'll add those other owners. Now let's go over to SharePoint, create an event, and we'll see how this thing works. So I'm on the events list. I'm logged in as Grady Archie, and I'm just gonna add an event on the 24th for a day off. I'll make this an all day event. And for the category, I'll just put in vacation. Doesn't make any sort of a difference in this case. 
So I'll click on Create. And then let's switch back to the flow and you'll see that it has started to run. Now back on the flow summary page, you'll see down in here the 28 day run history, which shows all the previous executions, whether they've worked or failed the last 20 days. And you'll see that there's one that was created three seconds ago and the status is running. So this is the flow that we just created and it started to run. If we click on this timestamp, we'll be able to go into exactly what it's doing at this point we'll see that the trigger has already finished and now it's currently running the approval step. So this should have sent an approval request to Adele and let's switch over to her account and see if that happened. So now we're in Adele's account and I can see that there's a vacation request from Grady in here. It gives me the details of this. Notice that it shows it's created by Steve and this particular line gives people a lot of issues because this is created by Steve because the approval ran under Steve's account. So that flow that we're working on was under Steve's account and when we created that create approval step, it created that approval record under Steve's account even though we are requesting this for Grady. This is an example where you could probably just use a service account, maybe a no reply type of an account, and that would be the service account that this would run under so that this wouldn't create any confusion for the manager that would be receiving this request. It gives us a link though to the PTO list item so we can go view that. It also gives us options here to approve and reject. And here's the, uh, the reason text box, the comments box. So if we wanted to reject this, and say um, no description provided and then submit this now you see the email has completely changed and now it's just showing that this would reject it because this is an adaptive card. So there's a lot of extra functionality provided by that. As an alternative to approving through email, the user can actually go into Power Automate itself and in the approvals area, they'll see the approvals here and they can respond to it here as well or even on their mobile device. So there's a lot of good options where people can access their approvals and respond to them. So let's switch over to Grady's account and let's see what that rejection looks like. In Grady's email, you could see that he got the request denied email notification that we configured. And over in the flow history, you could see that the processing went down and into the no branch as it should. So you see that Power Automate can be used for simple flows, even if it's just one single action. It can be used for complex flows as well to solve complex needs. Don't let the looks of this fool you. It is very easy to use. It looks very, very simple, but it can definitely have a lot of power and it's all in how you build this. I see building flows as more of an art. There's a lot of different ways to accomplish the same goal in Power Automate and it's all in your style and how you want to tackle that problem. There's a lot of power in this and I definitely recommend you try this. Let me know down in the comments below if you're already using Power Automate, if you've tried to use this, what your pain points are with this, or if you're enjoying this and you're trying to learn more about that. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this.